I post a lot of videos demonstrating OpenPilot, but I've never actually explained specifically how Kama's devices enable it to do what it does. I'm sure a lot of people might be wondering how exactly it takes control of all these different types of vehicles and improves on their stock lane keeping and cruise control systems. Well today, I'm going to explain just how OpenPilot hacks into your vehicle to give Tesla autopilot-like performance to your average economy car. So first off, let's look at the stock system and what it uses for dynamic cruise control and lane keeping assist. First you have the radar and that is paired with a monocular camera at the top of the windscreen. Together these two components are what your vehicle uses to identify lane lines and the cars in front of you. They send their information to a processor that uses algorithms to parse that information into control outputs for steering, gas, and brake. While these systems do have some great safety benefits that we'll get to later, the lane keeping ability leaves a lot to be desired, especially if your vehicle only has lane keep assist and can't actively steer in lane. Even Toyota will tell you their lane tracing assist can't handle driving past exits or taking sharp turns which makes it frustrating to use even on the freeway. Luckily, we can take advantage of how these systems communicate by tapping into their network, which is also known as a CAN bus. So we talked about radar and camera, but I should also point out that most newer vehicles have the ADAS module that processes all of the signals located inside the same unit as the camera. And that's why you can't actually get any images from the camera as it's all processed internally and turned into data for the car's CAN bus to understand. So the processor takes the camera image as well as the radar information and translates that into signals for acceleration and steering control. Let's look at a simple diagram to illustrate how all this works in a bit more detail. Here we have your standard level 2 ADAS system. In normal operation, the signals are read and the ADAS module sends commands onto the CAN bus for the appropriate controls to read. Remember, this is like a network and signals are broadcast out to all devices, but only actually read by the ones the message was specifically addressed to. So when we install our comma device, we are placing ourselves between the ADAS module and the controls. Now we control the network and we can block and filter the messages sent by the ADAS unit and replace them with our own. This is known in cybersecurity as a man in the middle attack. It just so happens to be the best way to hack into the controls of a vehicle as well. Since modern cars also have extremely helpful safety features like automatic emergency braking and pedestrian detection, we can forward those messages through and retain those safety features for when they are needed the most. However, not all cars are created equal, so I need to talk about some of the differences that can cause compatibility issues or limitations on what OpenPilot can do. Luckily for steering control, the camera is essentially always located at the top of the windshield and easily accessible. This isn't always the case for cruise control. Some vehicles separate the two systems. They have the steering commands sent by the camera module processed on one device, and the acceleration commands processed by a separate control unit located elsewhere in the car. This means we can no longer be the man in the middle for both. And this is why some vehicles on the supported car list still use the factory cruise control systems in combination with OpenPilot. Now there are ways to work around this, but I want to keep this video pretty basic, so I'm going to just stop there for now. I hope this gave you a good explanation of how OpenPilot controls your vehicle, and I hope you learned something from this. Leave any questions and comments below, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.